mammography is one of the best screening tools to find breast cancer. Breast cancer may not be preventable, but you can survive it through early detection. If you're a mother or grandmother, sister or best friend, aunt or cousin, we encourage you to know your risk, make healthy lifestyle choices, and to know what's normal for your body. Get screened, get your mammogram annually. We, we did! did. Another pastor chimes in on the row between religious and political leaders. Are grieving families being cheated out of thousands of dollars? The breast cancer gene connected to other forms of cancer. Plus, the largest underwater sculpture in the world is in the Bahamas. We've got those stories and more coming up tonight. I'm Dana Smith, and NB12 Weekend starts right now. Coffee news tonight as the nation's leaders and members of the religious community continue to face off over the gaming bill. One church leader has charged that those pastors are out of order for their criticisms of the Christie administration. Reverend Philip McPhee of Mount Calvary Baptist Church says those pastors are trying to run the church and the country, but he stands with the prime minister. The Prime Minister has been elected to govern the Bahamas, and I think it is far too long that we have allowed this, uh, a group of uh, moral majority of pastors who believe that they are more safe, uh, more justified, uh, more Christian, more knowledgeable of running the church and the country, which they are not. And, 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 and I think they are out of order. And I think the Prime Minister and the Deputy Prime Minister was right in saying to them, you run your church, let us run the country. Prime Minister Perry Christie and Deputy Prime Minister Philip Brave Davis have been engaged in a back and forth with a few religious leaders over the recently passed gaming bill. In an editorial published in the NASA Guardian, Pastors Alan Lee, Cedric Moss and Lyle Bethel called on Davis and Chrissy to go on record and tell the Bahamian people if they or the PLP have ever accepted donations from web shops or the people who run them. The men have accused the government of killing democracy by going against the results of the gambling referendum. Davis has hit back at the pastors, questioning if they're concerned about gambling proceeds making it to their collection plates. And this past week, Christie blasted church leaders who suggested the government is regulating the industry to repay alleged financial backers, stating the devil is a liar and he would not let them question his integrity. McPhee told NB12 it is not the job of pastors to disdain the country's leadership. We are to educate our people, to train our people, but we are not to, to disdain the leadership of, of, of our country in any way, form, or fashion. And it has been done on a numerous occasion by leading uh, pastors of this country uh, who seeks to believe that they are the moral majority, that they are more morally clean than every other pastor in this country, which is absolute foolishness. Several pastors from the Vote No campaign sat in the gallery of the House of Assembly for the tabling of the gaming bill, clad in black, to mourn the loss of democracy. During the bill's debate, Christie said no pastor in the country can give him a passport to heaven, adding whether people believe regulating web shops is the right thing to do or not, it's not a sinful act. Well, McPhee noted the Christie administration has been elected by both practicing Christians and those who are not saved. Therefore, he says officials must govern with both interest in mind to the best of their ability. He said pastors must not dictate to the nation's leaders how to run the country. We are not there to dictate to the prime minister or the deputy prime minister how to run the nation. We are, we are there to give wise counsel, to give advice, but when, when the church seeks to lead the country, uh, both spiritually and politically, then we must be very careful that we are uh, 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 putting ourselves in a serious position. West Africa's Ebola epidemic has grabbed international headlines 
with the disease spreading to our closest neighbors to the north, the United States. With some questioning what steps the Bahamas is taking to ensure the Ebola virus doesn't make it here, Tourism Minister Obi Wolchcom told NB12 the government is following the United States' lead. I think we take the lead in this case from the United States uh, because um, in those flights generally you'd find that they are connected to uh, the United States if they're going to come to the Bahamas and usually the businesses uh, via their route. Uh, they have uh, obviously I've been watching the situation very carefully. The Ministry responsible for Health is now in the United States at a PAHO conference. We'll be back at the end of the week and I'm sure some guidance is being given. Uh, we're going to protect our country and our borders uh, but of course we'll be guided by those persons who are out there now um, particularly the United States PAHO. Uh, they will have much to say about what's going on and we will take the lead because it's an international community and the international community works together in uh, such circumstances. The Bahamas has already experienced an Ebola scare after reports of a man infected with the virus spread rapidly via social media. It was later revealed that the man, a Ukraine native, had malaria. When asked if travel to and from the Bahamas could be restricted, Wilchcombe said most of our visitors come from markets where Ebola isn't a huge problem. Nonetheless, he said the country is concerned and closely monitoring the situation. Our numbers are pretty much from different markets. Uh, it, there, there could be, uh, always we have to pay attention to. Uh, you know, don't forget what's going on in um, the Middle East right now. So we have concerns about that too, but that could drive business this way. So you have to look at all the circumstances, everything that's going on, but we don't ignore any of it. And um, when we know about the first case in the United States of America, what does that mean? Uh, and uh, we've seen any other cases. We know that we had some new airlift uh, from parts of Canada. Have they had any issues? You have to always ask yourself the question. And we're out there trying to get new airlift from uh, China. We're out trying to get airlift from the Middle East. We're trying to get airlift from all over the world. The more visitors come to your country, you have to be very concerned. So uh, those countries where red flag flies, we have to pay close attention to them. Uh, but of course, as I said, uh, you have PAHO, you have uh, the um, all the agencies in the United States and around the world are paying attention to uh, what's going on. The, the truth is I feel very badly for that country. I feel very badly for the people and we just wish them well. From the crime beat, police are looking for the man who allegedly raped a woman before forcing her to drop him off in Yellow Elder Gardens. According to police reports, the woman stopped near a service station around 1.40 a.m. to allow another car to exit when an unknown man jumped into the back seat of her vehicle, held an object to her head, and demanded she drive to a track road near Bacardi Road. The man sexually assaulted her before ordering the woman to drive to Yellow Elder Gardens where he exited the car and escaped. Authorities are also searching for the gunman who stole bolts of Brazilian hair weave and an unspecified amount of cash in a daytime robbery at a local hair supply store. Police say sometime around 1.30 p.m. Saturday, a man walked into the hair and beauty supply store on East Street where he produced a handgun and demanded cash. The cashier handed over the drawer, but the man also took some bulks of Brazilian hair and a Samsung cell phone before escaping. In other news, could it be that even in death, some people and their families are being swindled? Well, a group of funeral home directors told NB12 that this industry has become a free-for-all where uncertified morticians are cheating, grieving families out of thousands of dollars. Kyle Joaquin has the story. A local funeral home director says funeral services has become a doggy dog industry in the Bahamas where you have some funeral homes hustling for bodies despite not even having a certified mortician. Co-director of Rock of Ages Funeral Home Kimuel Cox did not call names, but he said week after week families are placing the bodies of their loved ones into the care of funeral homes without a certified mortician. And they use non-licensed persons to operate to embalm pick up their loved one, conduct business, and no longer than uh, three weeks ago, we had a police officer who uh, came by looking for an individual who a family from Abaco gave monies to to bury their loved one, and the funeral home don't exist. Cox said the saddest part about all this is that these devastated families are getting the bad end of the deal. But some have switch and tell them, well, when one limo show up instead of two limos, mm -hmm. they say the limo broke down. Or they switch the casket, say, you will get a steel casket, but they end up giving you a plush and say, 
the manufacturer discontinued <laughs> dis discontinued the casket. So they can't get that casket and you can upgrade to the next level, so, but you have to pay fifteen hundred more dollars. Now that person has custody of the body and they are not going to release it unless you pay them. By law, when seeking to obtain a license to operate a funeral home, one must show proof of having a certified mortician. But even then, Cox says some of them only use the name of a mortician to get the license. Cox's mother and nephew, the co-directors of the funeral home, believe the only way to ensure there is a standard is to have an association. I don't see nothing happening right for now because it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. To fast track of Mr. Cox saying, you know, people are charging $3,500 for a service. And with that price, you know, they only want the body. They're not giving service as the name funeral service. They only, you know, they only care about themselves and not with the family that they're about to serve. You have to go to school and get the right curriculum so that you can know what to do and what not to do because you have all different sorts of diseases what people die from. So you as a mortician have to analyze the cases and know what to do. Our news team spoke with the director of another funeral home who admitted that he too has employees who deal with remains. However, he said because they have so many years of experience, it's as if they have a degree. Reporting for NB12, I'm Kyle Joaquin. With the six-year study into breast cancer prevalence in the Bahamas set to wrap up by the end of this year, researchers say new information shows a connection between the BRCA genes and ovarian and prostate cancer. Jasmine Brown reports. For years, the BRCA gene has been exclusively linked to breast cancer, but now officials say they're seeing a connection between the gene and prostate cancer and also ovarian cancer. The BBCIF has launched an aggressive campaign to test 8,000 women over four years to determine their risk of cancer and see if they have the mutated BRCA gene. The gene mutation is seen in 27 percent of Bahamian breast cancer patients. Initial findings indicate the Bahamas ranks amongst the top 20 countries for breast cancer diagnosis. It also ranks first in the world for the prevalence of the gene mutation in breast cancer patients with Israel coming in second with 12 percent. But new findings indicate that ovarian cancer is also commonly linked to BRCA1 and BRCA2 changes. Additionally, men with BRCA2 mutations are at an increased risk of getting prostate cancer. That's according to genetic counselor Isla Thompson. Males can actually get breast cancer as well, so they're at increased risk for that. Um, females are, if they are BRCA1 or 2 positive, they can have up to an 85% chance, lifetime chance of getting breast cancer. In terms of ovarian cancer, um, those women are, are at up to 40% chance of ovarian cancer, and prostate cancer is also increased for males as well. So it is important to remember that even if this gene is running through your father's side of the family, um, there's still a chance that he can pass it on as well. It's not just women who can carry these gene mutations. So far, uh, many of them actually do have a family history of ovarian prostate as well. Um, so we have been focused on breast cancer, but we definitely want to expand our reach and, and start looking at women with ovarian cancer as well. Thompson says both men and women can inherit a mutated BRCA gene from either their mother or father. People who have the gene mutation can also pass it on to their children. We're able to offer extra screening for them so that we can catch cancer at much earlier stages so that it's not stage 3, stage 4 where it becomes a lot more dire. Um, not only that, but we can allow people to just have more options in general. They can speak to their family members. Researchers believe a small gene pool is to blame for the high prevalence of a genetic mutation. People with BRCA mutations have an increased risk of getting cancer at an early age. Thompson says early screening is key, particularly those with a family history of cancer. I don't think genetic testing will ever stop in the Bahamas. I think it, you know, what we've realized over the past few years is just how important it is and how valuable it is for women to have this knowledge, whether or not they've ever had cancer. The BBCIF first started testing for the BRCA1 gene in 2008. So far, officials have tested more than 2,000 women. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Brown. When NB12 returns, the world's largest underwater sculpture is right here in the Bahamas. Stay with us.